that source data often changes during the lifetime of a product. Parts may be added or removed from the assembly or important product information is added to a part. In order to apply these changes downstream to the visualization assets, the time consuming process of data prepping must be repeated to keep the visualization data up to date. This data prepping process typically includes removing parts not relevant for the visualization, managing the hierarchy by moving parts or combining parts, configuring the geometry tessellation on a per part level, correcting the shading on the geometry, or setting up the materials. All of the steps require manual interaction with the source data and make change management a non-trivial process. Within Slot, this is about to change, as the novel Scene Rules engine enables us to automate the entire process. These scene rules are stored in your InSlot Studio Excel profile and can be automatically applied whenever data is loaded or used in the same way when processing batches using InSlot Pipeline. InSlot's scene rule engine makes it trivial to automatically regenerate visualization assets whenever the source data changes. If you haven't watched our CAD workflow video already, definitely check that out before we dive into the more advanced scene rules engine, as the CAD live link makes up an equally crucial part of the CAD workflow. So inside of Studio Excel, we can see that we've imported a car room and it's got the default tessellation on here. So let's go ahead and set this part up using the rules engine so that this gets tessellated and some materials get assigned automatically when going ahead and back processing this. On the right hand side, we've got our scene import rules and I'm going to go ahead and add an entry. I will call this one tessellate. I'm going to click enter. So inside of our rules, we can see we've got a handful of different settings. First of all, the description and I can go ahead and set an attribute. In this case, I'm going to set this to name and then my match regex. So for my specific scenario, I want to match everything with the name B underscore body so that both of my inner and outer parts get tessellated. So in this case, B underscore body and then dot star. Then we've got our priority and depending on how high we have it, it'll get listed inside of the rules dependently. The higher the rule, the earlier it will get processed. For now, I'm going to set this to 100. Inside of the predicate, I can decide what exactly should happen. With the predicate delete, we are able to remove parts. With set attributes, we can write attributes into the metadata of our parts. Then we can also combine meshes. With the predicate move, we are not just able to move parts into new folders, but actually rename parts as well. Then with the material assignment, we can change materials, use previous materials from our scenes, or swap materials out. We can also set entirely new materials up. And then in the tessellation predicate, we can set our tessellation settings and our shading. And we can go as far as to writing our own predicates through a C++ SDK. So you can go ahead and write your own plugins to create your own custom rules. In this case, I want to tessellate and then automatically I get my tessellation settings. So in this case, I want to set this to 0.01 and my maximum edge length, I want to set to one. I'm also going to go down into my shading magic and set this to normal. If you're having trouble understanding these settings, I highly recommend you go and watch our previous video from PLM to VR, in which we cover all of these settings in detail. What I can do now is go ahead and preview this. So on the bottom, we've now got our output log and here we can see that we've processed the rule name B underscore body with the predicate tessellate. And here we can see that two parts match. So this worked beautifully. If I want to, I can also go ahead and process this straight away. And there we go. We can see we've already tessellated our assets. So the next thing that I want to do is assign some materials. So to do that, I'll go ahead and add an entry. And in this case, I want to add a gold material. And I want my center part to be gold. So I can right click on my body and copy name. Then I can go to my match regex and simply paste it in. In this case, I'm going to set my priority to 60 and we can see this is listed correctly. My predicate I'll then set to material assignment and now I can go ahead and rename my new material to gold material. And then I'm going to set up the material. So my base color, I'll get a nice golden orange. Then my metalness all the way up and my roughness down. So now I actually want to create a second material for the outer room. So to do that, I'm just going to actually duplicate so that I don't have to set up the entire 
roll again. So this will be black material. And then inside of here, I'm going to rename this match regex to body two underscore two so that it matches the outer rim. With that done, I'm also going to rename the new material to black material and set this material up. So I'll go ahead and make this black, bring that roughness all the way down and the metalness as well. So instead of previewing or processing these new rules, I want to go ahead and apply them by simply dragging and dropping my asset into the viewport. So here I'm going to open the scene and there we have a pop-up asking us, do we want to use the rules that we have? In this case, yes. And there we go. On import, all of our rules are going to be assigned. And we can see this worked beautifully. We've got our tessellation and our material assignment. I want to go ahead and add another rule. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and add an entry. And I want to do a move. And for my move, what I want to do is actually grab my inner and my outer rim. And first of all, move them into a new folder and also rename them. So first of all, my attribute will be name, my match regex, I'll start off with the inner. So I also want to rename my rule to move, uh, move inner. And then I will copy and paste the name, copy name and paste it in. And my priority, I will set to 50. Then my predicate, I want to set to move. So this is already set correctly. And now my path. So in this case, I want to rename this to rim. And then I will create a new name for this. So this will be inner. Then I'll go ahead and duplicate this. I'm going to call this move outer. Then I'm going to set the name to two underscore two so that it matches the outer rim. And then I'm going to also rename this asset rim and then outer. So with this done, I'm going to go ahead and process this. And now on the left hand side, we can see inside of the outline, we've got a new folder called rim. And inside of there, we've got the outer and the inner rim. So on the left hand side, we can see that I've got one folder with one part left. And this is actually junk. If I go ahead and hide the rim, we can see that there's this last part here and I don't need this. So I want to go ahead and remove this. I'm going to add another entry. I'm going to call this remove junk. And with that done, I'm again going to set up my attribute with name and my match regex. I'm going to copy the, uh, the entire folder. So copy name and paste this in. My priority, I'm going to keep on zero. So this can happen at the end of my entire rules chain. And then instead of move, I want to have a delete predicate. So again, I'm going to go ahead and import my entire Katia file, open the scene. And yes, I want to use my scene rules. And there we go. On import, all of our rules are being applied and we're left with our high res asset tessellated with the materials assigned. And we've also set up the move. So we've got one folder with outer and inner and we've removed all of the junk. So what I can do now is go ahead and create some mesh operation settings and then let this process in the background through in slot pipeline without having to do any manual work anymore. With this next assembly, we want to go ahead and clean up the scene by regrouping and renaming most of the parts. So first of all, we can see that the normals of these rotors are actually flipped. So I want to go ahead and flip those. Then I want to group my bodies and change things around a bit. We can see on the left hand side in the outline of that things aren't really very organized. So I want to do some combining, some regrouping and so on. So inside of the scene import rules, the first thing I'll do is create an entry and I want to call this one flip rotors. So for my flip rotors rule, I actually want to use the predicate tessellate. And the reason for that is because inside of there, we have the option to invert normals. So first thing I'll do is go to my attribute, set this to name, my match regex. I'll get my rotors. In this case, they are all named the same due to the fact that they are instanced in the CAD file. So install is able to recognize this and keep the naming convention the same throughout the instances. So I've got my two rotor sides here. I'll just copy these names, paste it in, get the other one, copy the name and paste it in. And then my priority I'll set to 10 in this case. And there we go. So my predicate again, I'll set to tessellate and the settings, everything I'll keep on a default apart from invert normals. So with that done, I'll just click process and there we go. So the next thing that I want to do is group my body. So move it into a new folder. For that, I'll copy the name, 
create a new entry. I'll just group body. There we go. My attribute I'll set to name. My match regex will be the name of the body. My priority I'll just set to eight and I'll keep this on a move predicate. The path, I'll set a new folder called body parts and then I'll create the name being part. So in this case, I actually don't just wanna have the body, I wanna include the rotors as well. So in this case, the rotors are all named the same, which is really useful. So I'll just copy one name and um, add this to my match regex. So that way we can see now that my name is called part, and if we have multiple parts, Insult will automatically rename them to part, part one, part two, and so on. So if I process this, we can see we have a new folder called body parts, and we have part, part one, two, three, and so on. So the next thing that I wanna do is actually combine all of my rotors, because we can see they're all in this folder, a product one underscore one, with loads of folders and everything's just kind of messy. So I wanna combine everything and move it into a new folder. So to do that, I'll go into my rules, add an entry, I'll call this one combine rotors, maybe spell that correctly. There we go. And then I'll set my attribute to name, my match regex. I'll just grab the entire folder, copy name, paste it in, set my priority to um, seven. Then my predicate, I want to combine meshes. Then my path, I'm going to create a new folder called final and then I want to rename my combined meshes to rotors. So with that done, I'll click process, and there we go, we have one folder with the body parts, and one folder called final with my rotors. Finally, I want to do a combine of my body parts, and also move them into the final folder. So to do that, I'll go to my combined rotors and just duplicate this, because we've got a few things already set up. So I'll rename this to combine body. Then I will change my match regex to body parts. And my priority, I'll keep on seven. My predicate, I'll also keep on combined meshes. And here, my path, I'll keep on final, but I'll call it body parts. So with that done, click process, and there we go. We have one folder called final with rotors and my body parts in there. Okay, so now I actually wanna go ahead and change my materials. In this case, the black and the white paint, I wanna to change to this red plastic. So to do that, I'm gonna go ahead, create a new entry and rename this to switch material white. And then again, my attribute I'll set to name and my match regex, I'll grab everything in the scene. And what I then want to do is, again, set my material assignment. Okay, and, and this is what I wanna do. So in my material assignment, I wanna use the previous material name, which will then be the white one. And I wanna apply the current red material that is already in my scene. So I don't wanna create a new one. And Insult will automatically apply the red material if it matches the name. So let's go ahead and do this. Inside of the material configuration, I'm gonna find my white material, which is at the bottom here somewhere. There we go. So that is solid F. I'm gonna copy this and paste it inside of my previous material name. Then I'll find my red material, which is this one, FF0, copy and paste it into the new one. Okay, so now that we've got this set up, I'm gonna go ahead and process this. And there we can already see that we swapped out the white material with the red one. I wanna go ahead and do the same with this black center part. So again, add entry, switch material black, and then my attribute I'll set to name. My match regex will again be everything in this scene, and then set my predicate to material assignment. Again, inside of here, I'm going to find my black material. So let's see where this is. I'm going to go through the different materials. Okay, there we go. Solid zero. Use this as the previous. And then the new material, I want the red one. So I'll copy that name and paste it in. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and process this. Okay, so now we've finished setting up the materials and there's one final step that I wanna do, which is apply an attribute. 
And this can be really useful because we can also use those attributes that we set up inside of our settings to then either do tessellation, set materials, or for example, use your own predicates that you can set up through the SDK. So you can end up writing your own plugins, your rules, and so on. So this can become quite a complex system if you want it to. So to do this, I'm going to add an entry. I'm going to call this set attribute and then I will go into my attribute for now. I'll keep this on name. My match regex will be everything inside of the scene because I want to apply my attribute to everything. Then my predicate I will set to set attribute. And then inside of the attribute, I'll add an attribute. And this one I'll just call company for now. And then in the value, I'll type in instalod. Okay, so if I go ahead and process this, and now that that's done, I'm going to export the scene and bring it into Maya. Okay, so here inside of Maya, we've got the quadcopter imported. And if I go into my attribute editor and select my quadcopter, I'm just gonna move over and here on the bottom, we've got the extra attributes, which now shows company and instalod. So here we can see the brilliance of the scene import rules, with which you can not only build your central data source for visualization, but can dive right into the metadata and apply complex business logic for applications and use cases when needed. I hope this video was helpful to you, and I hope to see you in the next one where we dive into occlusion culling.